Welcome to the second lecture about one way ANOVA. In this lecture, we go through the calculations behind ANOVA and compute a simple postdoc test. The aim of this lecture is that you should understand how ANOVA works, and especially understand the output from software tools when you run an ANOVA. From the first lecture about ANOVA, we have seen that ANOVA involves analyzing the variance within and between the groups. Before we look at the ANOVA calculations, recall how the variance of a sample is calculated. As an example, we here have data on the systolic blood pressure of four individuals. To calculate the sample variance of this data, we can use the following equation. The numerator involves the sum of square distances between the data points and the mean, where xi denotes the value of each observed systolic blood pressure and x bar denotes the mean of those four data points. When we subtract the mean from the absurd values, we get the distances between the mean and the observations. Then we square the differences and sum up all those square differences. This is called the sum of square distances between the data points and the mean. The sum of square distances between the data points and the mean is then divided by the sample size minus one which is equal to the degrees of freedom. The variance can therefore be seen as the average square distances between the observations and the mean if we divide by only n instead of n minus one. Okay, so we will now have a look at a numerical example where we'll compute the ANOVA by hand based on measurements of systolic blood pressure of 12 independent individuals. The study design is balanced since we have an equal number of observations in each group. Each age group therefore includes four individuals. Their blood pressure has been measured on four young individuals in age 20 to 35, four middle-aged individuals and four old individuals that are older than 55 years of age. For example, this person has a total blood pressure of 1 in 21 and has an age between 20 and 35. Whereas this data point represents a middle-aged person with a systolic blood pressure 130. Before we look at the calculations, let's first have a look at some notations that you will see in this lecture. K represents the number of categories or groups of the independent variable. In our example, we have three groups, which means that K is equal to 3. And I represents the sample size of group I. In our example, all groups include four observations, which means that ni is equal to four for all three groups. xij represents the observation j in group i. For example, x23 corresponds to the third observation in the second group, whereas x12 represents the second observation in the first group. Capital N represents the total sample size which is 12 in our example. X bar i represents the mean of group i, and X double bar represents the grand mean, which can be seen as the weighted mean of the means, or the mean of all the observations. We first start to calculate the mean blood pressure in each of the three groups. We simply sum the observations within each group and divide by the sample size, and i, of the corresponding group. For example, the mean blood pressure of the young individuals is 1 in 24, and the mean blood pressure of the middle-aged group is 1 in 29, and 1 in 34 for the old individuals. Next, we calculate the grand mean, which is the mean of all observations in all Kale groups. We simply sum the blood pressure for all individuals and divide by the total sample size. If we sum all our data points and divide by 12, that will result in a grand mean of 1 in 29. The grand mean can also be calculated by taking the average of the group means. Note, if the groups have different sample sizes, we need to calculate the weighted mean instead. It is therefore usually easier to calculate the grand mean based on all observations instead of calculating the weighted mean of the means. Next, we calculate the sum of squares within the groups, which is called error sum of squares, or SSE. SSE is the sum of the square differences between every observation and the corresponding group mean. 
We therefore subtract 124, which is the mean value of the four Jung individuals, from each observation in the Jung group, and subtract 129 from the observations in the middle aged group, and 134 from the observations in the old group. Finally, we sum all the square differences. In this example, the SSC is equal to 60. Next, we calculate the sum of squares between groups, SSB, which is the sum of the sample size of each group multiplied by the square difference between the corresponding group mean and the grand mean. Note that the grand mean is subtracted from the group means. For example, the difference between the mean of the first group and the grand mean is negative 5. The square of negative 5 is 25. The square difference multiplied by the sample size of group 1 is 100. By summing these calculations for each group, we get an SSB value of 200. Finally, we calculate the total sum of squares, SST, which is simply the sum of SSB and SSC. We see that the total sum of squares is 260. We can also calculate the total sum of squares by simply sum the square differences between each data point and the grand mean. In our example, we would subtract the grand mean, 129, from all our observations and then sum the square differences, which would result in a value of 260. Let's summarize what we have done so far in the so called ANOVA table. The second column includes our SSB, SSC, and SST values. Next, we add the degrees of freedom to the table. The degrees of freedom between groups is the number of groups minus 1. Since we have three groups, the degrees of freedom is 2. The degrees of freedom within groups is the total number of data points minus the number of groups which is equal to 9. The degrees of freedom for the total sum of squares is simply the total number of data points minus 1, which is equal to 11 in our example. Next, we calculate the mean squares, which is the sum of squares divided by the corresponding degrees of freedom. The mean square between groups, MSB, is therefore 200 divided by 2, which is equal to 100. The mean square within groups, also called mean square of error, MSE, is approximately equal to 6.67. Note that the MSE can be interpreted as the pooled sample variance, which estimates the common variance in the population. For our example data, all three groups happen to have the same variance. We see that the sample variance in all three groups is equal to 6.67. Since the sample size is the same in our three groups, we can simply take the average of the three sample variances to calculate the pooled sample variance. Once we have worked out the mean squares, we can calculate the F-ratio by dividing the MSB by the MSC. The F-ratio in our example is therefore 100 divided by 6.67, which is equal to about 15. Finally, we compute the p-value which corresponds to the area to the right hand side of our F ratio in an F distribution with the degrees of freedom 2 and 9. The degrees of freedom for the given F distribution are 2 and 9 according to our ANOVA table. By using a software, the area to the right hand side of 15 is computed to 0 0.0014. This value corresponds to our p value. Since the p-value is less than our significance level of 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis of equal means and conclude that at least one mean differs from the other means. We complete our ANOVA table with the p-value. We can compare our table with the output tables from, for example, R or SPSS. Both these outputs look very similar to our table. The output table from R has been generated by the AOV function followed by the summary function. The output from R shows the degrees of freedom in the first column, whereas SPSS displays these in the second column. 
Note that the output table from R does not display the total sum of squares. Numerical differences in the p-values are due to rounding. Based on the p-value, we can conclude that the mean systolic blood pressure is significantly different between the age groups. However, we do not know which of the means that differ from the other means. There could be a difference in the mean blood pressure between young and middle-aged individuals, or between young and old individuals, or between middle-aged and old individuals. To find out which of the means that differ from each other, we can perform a so-called postdoc test that we will discuss only briefly in this lecture. The simplest test for multiple comparisons is the Fisher's Least Significance Difference Test, or the LSD test, which is basically a set of pairwise t-tests. Note that Fisher's test is a test that you should perform only if you reject a null hypothesis from your ANOVA, and if you have few groups. The numerator is the difference between the two means that are compared, whereas the denominator involves the square root of the MSC and the sample size of each group. The MSC value can be taken from our previous ANOVA table. Remember that the MSC is the pooled sample variance of all the groups. The degrees of freedom for the test is the total number of data points used to estimate the MSC minus the number of groups. Since we used all data points to estimate the MSC and we had three groups, the degrees of freedom is equal to 9. The only difference between an unpaired t-test and the Fisher's LSD test is that the LSD test uses the pooled variance from all groups and uses the degrees of freedom of capital N minus K, whereas the t-test uses the pooled variance only from the two groups that are compared and the degrees of freedom equal to the number of observations in the two groups, minus 2. We'll here have a look at how the LSD method works by comparing the mean systolic blood pressure between a young and a middle-aged individuals. We subtract the mean blood pressure of the middle-aged group from the mean blood pressure of the young group, and then divide by the square root of the MSC and the sample size of each group. The MSC of our previous ANOVA was 6.67, and the sample size of each group is 4. The t-statistic is equal to negative 2.74. Using a two-sided test, the area to the right-hand side of 2.74 and to the left-hand side of negative 2.74 in a t-distribution of 90 years of freedom corresponds to the p-value. By using a software, the area in the two tails is computed to 0 0.023, which is our p-value. With a significance level of 0.05, we can conclude that systolic blood pressure is significantly lower in young individuals compared to the middle-aged individuals. If we compare all means, we will obtain the following p-values. We see that all means are significantly different from each other since all p-values are less than 0.05. When we have more than three groups, we should use the postdoc test that corrects for multiple comparisons, such as the Bonferroni method or Tuchus test. This was the end of this lecture about one-way ANOVA. Thanks for watching.